Do you ever want to move in a certain direction, but find yourself being pulled in a whole bunch of others? I totally have. I'm Hannah Mason, and in today's Spark, we're going to explore choosing to be the rider over being the horse. There are a whole bunch of different disciplines that I've been working on taking on in my life because I know that they're incredibly life-changing. They bring me joy and peace and health and happiness. And a lot of the times I sort of struggle to overcome the desire to just like sit and do nothing or stay in bed extra long and then I don't have time for my morning meditation and my morning yoga or my morning prayer time or whatever it is. And I realize that the more I do these things every single day on a daily basis, It's like, I don't have to think about it so much. It just kind of happens. So I'm sure most of you, when you wake up in the morning, you go to the bathroom and you brush your teeth. And I don't think that you have to struggle. Am I going to brush my teeth today? Am I not going to brush my teeth today? You don't sit there having like a battle of wills with your toothbrush. And that's probably because what you did for so many years is wake up in the morning, pick up the toothbrush, brush your teeth. And when you do an action like that over and over and over again, it's really simple. It becomes a habit. And what a habit is, is a behavior that you've done so many times that rather than it being ruled by your conscious mind, it's ruled by your subconscious mind. It becomes so automatic that you don't actually have to think about it at all. My guess is there are plenty of times that you're like, did I even brush my teeth today? And you don't even remember having brushed your teeth and yet there you are with like a minty taste in your mouth. Or you've gone driven from home to some other location that you drive a lot to, let's say work. I walk everywhere, but let's say you drive to work and you don't remember the drive in between home and work. Where did that go? Well, what happened was that your subconscious took over because you've habituated yourself to do that drive so many times. Your conscious mind is like, I have way too many things, important things to think about. I don't need to think about this drive that's so easy. And your subconscious mind takes over. And so really what you want to do is habituate yourself to take on... The same is true in every other aspect of your life that is going to bring you joy, meaning, purpose, happiness. It's going to require a level of discipline. Exercise, getting to bed at a decent hour, having healthy eating habits, controlling what you say and to whom you say it, thinking about uh, what you want to do, like setting important goals and working towards them. All of that requires you taking charge and you setting good habits in place. And what that demands is that you become the rider, that you become the jockey of your life rather than the horse. Because the horse, if it's up to the horse, it'll just be like, oh, that's some grass. Yum, yum. Let's go have some. Oh, I feel like peeing over here, even though it's not a bathroom. Let me just relieve myself. Ooh, let's look at the sunset. Uh, I'm kind of tired. I'm just going to chill out, right? It thinks of all of these things of just whatever its body whims itself to do. And the jockey's job is to literally pull the horse back into center and say, nope, we're going this way. And what I'm noticing more and more in my interactions with my clients, in my interaction as a mom, and in just looking at myself, that so many of the challenges that we have in life is because we've let the horse take over. So our bodies and our minds are supposed to be our servants. They're supposed to be there to serve us. And often what we do is we allow them to be the jockey. We allow them to be in charge and we go around like horses and just do whatever they want to do. They feel like eating a tub of ice cream. Okay. They feel like staying up till three o'clock in the morning. Okay. They feel like checking Facebook over and over and over again. Okay, and this is where like our lives go out of control or they go based on habit patterns that were created from an unhealthy or immature childish place. But amazing things that you want to happen in your life have to come from a higher consciousness adult place, like a grown up place. What we say in Hebrew, mochin de gadlut, right? So this is like 
high consciousness, expanded consciousness, or simply grown-up consciousness. So from a grown-up mind, you can say, wow, I want this thing in my life. But then you have to get the horse in check. And just like with a real horse, you have to tame it, which means that at the beginning, you're going to have to use your will to overcome the desire to like stray over there and eat the tub of ice cream just every single day set habits in place habits are really really easy to set in place when you are very clear on your goal and you repeat over and over and over again that this is what you're going to do and one of the things that is absolutely mind-blowing about the human brain is that if you visualize yourself doing something, your body actually can't tell the difference between that visualization and the actual doing something. So if you want to get in the habit of looking at ice cream and turning away, you can actually picture yourself doing that over and over and over again so that when you actually face the ice cream, you might just literally, like a Pavlov's dog, turn your head away, right? Or If you picture yourself waking up at exactly six o'clock in the morning, you could do that over and over and over again in your mind. And you know what? Probably without an alarm clock, you'll find yourself just arising at that time naturally. Or you could picture yourself when you're in the middle of working. Let's say for me, when I'm working on one of my books. So every 20 minutes or so, I find myself wanting to like stray and check Facebook or something like that. But I could sit and visualize myself writing for an hour straight. I can visualize myself looking at the clock, let's say one o'clock, all the way up to two o'clock and in between having total focus and concentration. I can visualize myself doing that over and over and over again. And my horse will be like, oh, this is what I do when I sit down to write. I just totally focus. I don't look anywhere else. And my mind is totally clear. So That's what happens when, if you've ever ridden a horse, chances are you haven't ridden a wild horse, you've ridden a tame horse that somebody worked very, very hard to train to behave in certain ways. And that horse is just like us. There's a part of us that's like an animal, and we have to tame that animal if we want to be able to live the lives that we dream about using our our conscious brain, using our higher brain. We don't just want to live from that lower place, because at the end of the day, we're not horses right? This is where Hitler got it totally wrong. We're not beasts. We're so much higher than beasts. Like, we can do amazing things. We can dream of great futures. We can create art and culture. We can try to save the world and connect with people on the other side of the planet. I can tell you when the tsunami happened in Thailand 14 years ago when Ari Love was born, there wasn't a single horse on planet Earth that cared one iota about the horses in Thailand that were suffering, right? But how many millions of people the world over donated money and food and clothing to the people who are suffering in that tsunami? So many, because there's something so much higher about us than just being animals. So I want to encourage you to think about something that you've been really struggling to make happen in your life. And first of all, use the tool of visualization. Second of all, use the tool of habit. Habits are much easier to set into place if you do them at the same time every day or if you attach them to a habit that you already have. So for example, you can attach taking medicine you know you need to take or vitamins or herbs or drinking water to a habit you already do, like brushing your teeth in the morning. And the other thing is really avoid distraction if you can. So for example, I have a rule that until I do my morning meditation, until I do my morning yoga, and until I do my morning prayer, I don't turn on my phone. So not every morning this happens, but ideally this is the the, the ritual that I've set into place. So I've already taken out a huge chunk of what distracts me from getting my horse in line. And I can tell you now, just I wake up in the morning, I immediately go to my special spot on the couch. That's another thing to like set a fixed place for things to happen. I have a special spot on the couch where I sit down to do my morning meditation and I don't have to question it. It just like happens on its own. My body just goes there. My horse has been trained after weeks of doing this um, and know that it takes 21 days to set a habit into place. That's not so long. It feels like a long time when you're in it. But once you're past it, all of a sudden you'll find your body, right? Your horse will just start doing things for you and making it so much easier. So I want to bless you that you can rise to a higher place 
by just picking one habit that you're going to instill that's going to help you shift and move forward to where you want to go. And if you need help clarifying a vision for yourself, clarifying what are the key habits that you need to set into place, I'm totally here for coaching. And remember, my coaching is 100% money back guaranteed, no questions asked, because I really believe in what I do and I really want to create a shift in other people's lives and help them move forward and do amazing things. And in the meantime, I want to wish you a beautiful day. Want to experience more vibrance, clarity, and joy in your life? Book a guaranteed session at hannamason.com slash joy.